Good morning, good evening, and good day. Thank you so much for watching Attack Power Gaming. Today, we are comparing the most common and some of the best armored cars in the game from both the Allies and the Axis divisions. If you enjoy this content, please consider hitting that like button, dropping a comment, and subscribing to the channel so we can continue to grow and get more people into this game and good at it, because this game is really fun. Let's dive right in. So I want to start off first with my general disclaimer. Remember, all this information is generally my opinion, uh, other than the data I'm actually reading here to you. And my goal is to inform and get everyone a little bit better at this game. Don't be afraid to drop a comment down below if you have a differing opinion. Now, first off, how did I choose these specific armor cars? So we have the allies here and we have the axis here as well. You're going to notice this is not every single armor car in the game and it's missing some standout units. Um, it's missing specifically the Puma, the Little John, uh, the 234 slash 1. So some really strong armored cars. The reason I did not include these is because they appear in two or less divisions. So all of the armored cars we're going over today are in at least three different divisions um, that you're actually going to see them. So like I tried to pick the armored cars that you would actually run into commonly. Yes, the Puma and the Little John are awesome. But the Little John only shows up in the 6th Airborne and... The Puma only shows up in two German divisions, uh, Panzer Lair and something else. So that you're just not going to see them very much. Yes, they're fantastic, but they're just not common enough. These you're going to see a lot more, especially like the BA-10. The, uh, the the BA-10 is super, super common. The SU-57 comes up in five or six. The Staghound and the M8 come up. This one comes up in about four, and the Staghound comes up in about three. Uh, you'll actually notice they're almost exactly the same. And, you know, if we hop over here to the Axis, the 231 comes in like eight or nine divisions. The SD KFZ 250 slash 9 comes up in 7 or 8. The SPW 222 comes up in like 8 of them. Uh, the, the SPW 233 is in at least 4 or 5 or 6, something like that. So I just tried to pick the ones that actually come up pretty often. And, and you know, and the ones that are actually like good to use. Because there are other armor cars that are really not good. Let me really quick get out of the way. Jeeps are terrible. Okay. Motorcycles are terrible. Yes, you can bum rush people with a bunch of Jeeps. That doesn't make them good. They're, they're garbage. Um... I, I did not include those. I also didn't include the new Italian, like, flak recon car, which I've heard is pretty good, but I haven't used it enough myself to say so, and I'm not sure if it actually met my three-division rule here for this. So, let's dive in otherwise with this. Starting with the Allies, I have four of their most common recon vehicles here, and, and they're, uh, probably four of the best ones they got. We have the BA-10, the Su-57 for the Soviets, and then the... British basically have the Staghounds, and they have a whole bunch of different versions of this, a, bun a bunch of different models. The Mark One is the one that comes up the most often. There are the Mark Three and the Mark Four, and they're, they're, they have similar. They're similar, but they do have some different weapons and stuff on them. And then we have the M8, which is the American recon. It comes up in some French divisions as well with different names and stuff, but is essentially the same tank. Uh, excuse me, armor car. So let's start at the bottom here with the miscellaneous stats here we're gonna start with our slowest vehicle today the ba-10 which only has a 28 kilometer an hour off-road and 55 kilometer on-road very it's actually pretty slow like it's not a fast recon vehicle at all it's going to take a little bit of time to get to the the front it will not catch up with your transports and things then we have the su-57 which is a 52 kilometer an hour speed off of the road on the road is 72 kilometers so it's respectable it can definitely keep up with some of the slower transports and stuff so it definitely can be deployed a little bit more aggressively at the beginning of the game and then we have our super fast armor cars here with the staghound and m8 being 45 kilometers off-road and 90 kilometers an hour on-road that is very fast it'll actually beat a lot of transports to the front line so these are really really good at getting up in your opponent's face early that's a great use for these both of these vehicles um, i'm actually going to kind of talk about these as a as a pair because if you look at their stats they're actually almost identical different machine gun loadout here slightly different side armor and back armor but otherwise they're actually identical so just be aware i'll probably refer to them as a as kind of a group there then we have our stealth and optics all four of these have the exact same stealth and optics of medium stealth with very high optics meaning they will actually spot lots of things they're very useful they should have a pretty easy time staying out of the reach of infantry because they can see them in their buildings and stuff which is very useful now hopping up to the armor here the armor is pretty similar across the board we have basically weak armor 15 to 20 millimeters 25 millimeters this is going to stop basically nothing even you know your anti-tank rifles and stuff can pierce this so you know 
don't expect it to protect you from much of anything. All it really does is stops small arms fire from shooting at you so they can't die to like rifles you know motorcycles and jeeps can die to normal rifle fire which is why they're so terrible but these guys these guys will not but essentially if anything shoots at these it's going to pierce them so just be aware their armor is mostly just to keep small arm fire away so we're not even going to really go into it we're going to hop up here into the important stats here and that is their weapons let's start with the ba10 and it has a 45 millimeter gun with ap and he shells a nice 75 millimeter penetration nice five damage there uh 50 accuracy on that a 1250 meter rain and a 10 round per minute now we can't see the he stats here but it does 0.78 damage i checked all of these he stats before so it only does 0.78 damage which means it's less than one guy each time it actually lands a hit so it's not really good at shooting infantry it's for shooting tanks really and transports and things i shouldn't even say tanks but light vehicles and transports it's got two dt machine guns which is respectable you know it, it can it can lay down some machine gun fire to support your troops that's for sure then we hop over to the su-57 which only has one weapon and that is the 57 millimeter cannon here which has ap and he shells as well but this one has a nice penetration of 115 millimeters six damage it has a 50 percent accuracy a 1500 meter range and a 12 rounds per minute rate of fire it also only does 0.78 damage in he so just just keep this in mind because it will come up later now this is a this kills tanks i mean i'm gonna put it frankly this thing can kill tanks it's got this nice 1500 meter range it can really reach out and kill things it, it's terrible against infantry it has that really low damage on its he shell and it has no machine gun so this is not for supporting your troops with you know he fire or anything this is for killing other opponents vehicles even tanks like this can this can easily punch through a panzer IV. This has no trouble. It can punch through a Stug 3 too. Can punch through a T-34 at closer ranges. So I mean this this can this can bat above its weight class, that's for sure. And we're hopping over here to the Staghound and M8. These both have the same M6 37 millimeter gun with AP and HE shells. They have a 70 meter penetration, five damage. So, and again, the damage matters because if it's five or more, it can kill a tank in two hits. Like if it manages to punch through something, you get two hit kills. Um, and then we're gonna hop down uh, accuracy at nice 50% again, a 1250 meter range, solid range, and only seven rounds per minute though, which is significantly slower than the 10 and 12 that we saw out of the Soviet weapons. And these also have 0.78 damage on their HE shells, which is quite poor machine gun wise the staghound has a slightly better loadout with double browning machine guns while the m8 has the 12.7 millimeter m2 hb machine gun now they it almost works out to be the same really i guess because this is so much heavier it causes so much more suppression than the double rounding the problem is actually this it runs out of ammo really fast so this machine gun will not fire for very long be aware this will run out in a hurry 320 mil bullets coming out of a machine gun doesn't last very long on the other hand this can actually supply machine gun fire for quite a long time so those are our allied armor cards oh price wise we have the 25 points for the re the ba10 which is by by far the cheapest 45 points for the su-57 which is the most expensive and the staghound m8s come in at 40 points if i had to compare just the allied armored cars i actually personally think i fear the ba10 the most which i know sounds ridiculous but i gotta say every time i go up against a ba10 it seems to kill more stuff than it should it it's for some reason like nails all the german armored cars really well it, it can take those out really effectively it does great against you know it does great against transports and stuff i i find the ba10 the, the most the thing i fear most and again it's only 25 points so it, it, people can play with them so aggressively because you're risking so little and it can be such a high reward using them they're just a great unit uh, the the, the stack on animates are at fabulous i mean they're very dangerous at the beginning of the game because they can get in so quickly and really mess up your early pushes and stuff by killing transports and all kinds of other things so that they're very dangerous to be sure but as the game wears on they they tend to lose a little bit of their of their efficacy because they just they they can't support infantry super well because their gun doesn't have a great great um uh, great damage in it and there's still 40 points like 40 points is a lot like you could be getting other things with that so in terms of my own feelings about it i actually fear the ba10 most because of its price and it just seems to overperform for for based on the stats uh stat wise though i mean the m8 and staghound are definitely the strongest here the su-57 while being dangerous to like bigger vehicles it lacks machine guns and it lacks you know it lacks support 
weapons at all. So it, it can be a little it can be a little lacking there. Now the VA-10 is very slow, so that it's not used in the same way as the two on the right here. So let's hop over to our Axis armor cards, and these are definitely the more well-known ones. The Axis are definitely a lot more armor car centric, I think, than the Allies. You find these in a lot more divisions than the Allies have in theirs. So we have the SPW-231, the SDKFZ-250-9, the SPW-222, and the SPW-233. Now, I am going to kind of lump these three on the left together because they are very similar in the fact that they are auto cannon armor cars. Now, auto cannon means they fire multiple shots very quickly out of their gun, and it's usually like a lower caliber gun, and it'll, you'll see it go doo, 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 like that. These things are absolute infantry destroyers. They will melt a squad of infantry so quickly. That is their main design. I mean, that that is what they do. They do have the 0.78 damage, just like the allied armor cars but the fact is that's for each shell coming out of this gun so since they're firing 103 rounds per minute instead of 10 you know you're putting out so much more he damage these things just melt infantry squads the spw 233 on the other hand is a normal firing like 12 rounds per minute kind of cannon and we'll get into it in a second let's hop into these stats here starting with the slowest of the bunch the sdk of z 250 slash 9 i'm probably just going to call this the sdk of z because I don't want to say the rest. It only has a 50 kilometer per hour off-road speed and a 70 kilometer per hour on-road speed, which is not terrible. I mean, it'll definitely get to the battlefield relatively quickly. It just won't be right next to your transports. Then we have the SPW-222, and this is actually, this is not a separate unit. This is a unit you have to bring in with your off players, so the two-man recon squads, but you definitely want to take these when you can because it's like you get to kind of deploy the off player to go recon and then use this really aggressively. It has a 36 mil, uh, kilometer off road. So it's actually quite slow off the road, but it has 73 kilometers an hour on road. So it gets places where it gets to where it needs to pretty quick. Uh, it's, it's, it's a solid. And again, you're going to have to add 10 points for the off player that you're, you're getting with or 15 points, excuse me. I think 15, 15 points for the off player. Then we hop over to the, well, the SPW two, three, one and the SPW two, three, three have the same speed. They're actually the same, like weapon they're the same i mean a uh, chassis the same vehicle with a different gun on top so they're actually like the same everything else they have a 43 kilometer an hour off-road speed so they're not very fast and then 85 kilometer an hour on-road speed that's fantastic they'll beat most normal transports that move at 80 kilometers to the battlefield so that's definitely really useful then we have our stealth, which again is medium across the board, and the optics, which is also very high across the board. Of course, the SPW-222 has the very light transport because it can carry two man squads as well. So those are those miscellaneous stats at the bottom. A little quick check out the armor, which across the board is pretty standard, 25 millimeters, 20 for the SPW-222, and then 10 millimeters on the back and sides. And again, if these guys are getting shot, they're getting pierced for the most part. This is just to block small arms fire. So let's hop up here to the, the cannons we got going on. Now, the SPW-231 has a slightly different gun than the SDKFZ and the SPW-222. Uh, across the board though, 45 millimeters of penetration on this thing. So it's not really piercing tanks, but it definitely can do plenty of damage to transports and other light vehicles like other armored cars. It has two damage for the AP shells and all of these have 0.78 damage for the HE shells. But remember they're firing 10 times the number of bullets. So, I mean, that number is actually qu quite a bit higher when we actually consider the HE damage that is output. A 15% accuracy seems very low, but again, they're firing 10 times the number of rounds, so it actually works out to be similar, if not a little bit more accurate. They only have a 750 meter range, though. There's no making up for that. It's about 500 meters less or or, seven, or half the range of the, of the 233 over here. So definitely, these are closer range brawlers. Uh, the SPW-231 has a slightly slower rate of fire at 89 rounds per minute versus the other two, which have 103 rounds per minute. Machine guns, one for each one of those. Okay, so they're not putting down a lot of machine gun fire, but they don't really have to because they're using their, their auto cannons instead. So like I said, these guys are for killing infantry and transports. That's what they do. Now, if you have a whole bunch of these, like three or four, can they kill something bigger? Yeah, potentially, just by like pure weight of fire, they might be able to take out a medium tank. They will definitely panic it. So like you can stress it out and then go, try to go surrender it with another unit or something. So like that's a definite option. But in terms of actually 
actually killing stuff. They can kill other armored cars. They can kill transports, light tanks they can take on. But their main job is specifically for killing infantry, and they do it very, very well. Two of these can kill an infantry squad in a single burst. It's pretty intense. So I, they're very effective. You'll see them all over the place. Then we have the 233, which is kind of unique for the Germans because this is the only one that's kind of like this. They have one that only has HE shells. It's not nearly as good. It has a hundred millimeters of penetration. That makes it really dangerous. Now that's the heat shell. The AP is a, is a little bit lower than that. So that's the heat shell. Don't forget. And that's going to have a shorter range. Okay. The damage though on that heat shell is eight, which is fantastic. The AP shell is about five, I believe. I can't remember exactly the number, but I think it's five. And then the HE though is 2.2 damage. That's huge. So this is going to kill infantry really effectively. It's actually as good as a normal support gun. Uh, you're like IG-18 or something. It can really kill infantry well. I've actually had my SPW-233 kill AT guns that were shooting at it uh, because they missed two times and then this thing killed them. So it, it is actually a really, really effective gun. It can kill tanks and things. It has a 1,500 meter range with a 35% accuracy. The accuracy is a little bit low. That's more that's more of the heat shell, I believe. The accuracy is a little bit low, but it, it it hits often enough 1500 meter range so it's reaching out and it's got a 12 rounds per minute this is a really really good unit i always suggest taking these if your division offers it they're really effective they overperform for their 35 point cost they do a lot of damage to infantry and stuff they even though they don't have a machine gun they support infantry really well because they just do so much damage they can take out supporting weapons it's a great unit. This is a very strong unit. I love to take, if I have this, I love to take both. A lot of times you'll be able to have one auto cannon and one SPW-233. These are really, really effective. Um, of, of the bunch here, I definitely would lean towards the 233. I always take it when possible. All of these auto cannon armor cars are fantastic, though, at what they do. It's something the allies really don't have access to. Like, one or two allied divisions have auto cannon cars, but not very many. Like, not a lot at all. So, the the Axis really have access to this unique and generally powerful unit that it can really do damage against infantry and stuff. And especially, armored cars can really shine against divisions that do not have AT built into their infantry. Because you can get really up close and personal and be really dangerous with these things and really wipe out infantry in these unfair fights. So they can do a lot of damage, especially when you line them up against non-AT infantry. Now they do really poorly against, you know, like the Russian divisions with tons of PTRSs and stuff because those things can kill these. They can reach out to 400 meters range and actually like pin these things and stuff and, and it can be a little bit more difficult to use them effectively. So just be aware of that. In terms of which of all of these armor cars do I think is the best one, we hop back over here to the allied one really quick. I, I, I honestly, I lean towards the 233 with the axis i just think it's the most effective and flexible of all of them because it can kill infantry and kill bigger things as well so it's just really really good it's really fast as well but for some reason i i don't know why but first the ba10 is just a weird weapon that that scares me whenever i see it i just feel like it kills me it just does I, I apparently i just don't know how to kill this stupid thing i seem to die a lot to these i i suggest taking them when you have them they're very effective but all of these are very good recon cars and armored cars in this game tend to really overperform based on their cost. They can really do a lot of damage to infantry. A lot of times, depending on which one it is, they can hold their own against even some lighter tanks and even some medium tanks, depending on the range. So I do strongly suggest when your division offers armored cars, you take advantage of them, at least some of them. You don't have to go hog wild on them, but you can definitely use them. And always be careful. There's plenty of people who love to just bum rush a whole bunch of these at the beginning of the game. That can be really dangerous. If you have nothing prepared to stop them, like like two AT guns or like some kind of medium tank that can not be affected by them. They can do a lot of damage and you can find yourself severely on the back foot at, right at the beginning of the game if you're not prepared for this kind of thing. So be aware, especially when you get to choose your division. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If you did, please drop that like and hit that subscribe button. Thanks again and have an awesome day.